Hey, buddy. What's the hurry? Don't you know I got a part in this show, too? In case you don't know it, I'm a pretty important guy. Now, just let me get into the picture and I'll prove it to you. You see, my name is Tech. T-E-C-H. Oh, I ain't so doggone big. But I sure know a thing or two about fixing cars. After all, I oughta. You see, I go around picking up service dope from a lot of smart cookies. Then again, I run into characters like this guy. Oh, watch me give him the needle. Well, if it ain't old Hotshot Joe, the super service salesman. Hey, what you doing? Lousing up another repair order? Listen, you little sawed-off son of a... Uh, 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 uh. Watch your language. Besides, here comes Al, the service manager. Hey, Joe, what does this order mean? All it says is correct low gas mileage and poor performance. Well, Mr. Jones said his car didn't have any pickup. And he hollered about poor gas mileage. Yeah, I can read, but I can't put an order like this in the shop. The boys wouldn't know where to start. What's causing the trouble? Did you road test the car? Well, no, Al. You see, I was busy and... Busy? Sure, we're all busy. You got a road test when you get a complaint like this. Come on, we'll do it now. Hey, not so fast. You better check the service record on Jones' car before you go. Not a bad idea, half point. Let's see, uh, engine tune up last week. Carburetor okay. New muffler two weeks before. Come on, I said check it, not memorize it. Get the gas mileage tester and let's hit the road. Jones was right. This job is lazy. Might be late timing. But Mike set the timing when he tuned the engine last week. Sure, but that was at idling speed. I'll bet the spark advances, cockeyed. Using too much gas, too. Let's take her back to the shop. I'm going to give Mike this job again. Stick around. Maybe you'll learn something about Spark Advance. Hey, Mike, take Mr. Jones' car. No pickup. Poor gas mileage. Uh-huh. Carburetor overhaul, huh? Uh-huh. Carburetor overhaul, huh? Only the carburetor checked okay last week, buddy. Yeah, why blame the carburetor? Don't you know poor ignition causes more squawks about gas mileage than poor carburation? But I set that timing last week. What more can I do? You can check the spark advance. You didn't check the governor weights and vacuum unit last week, did you? No, it was only a tune-up. Besides, how are you going to check a vacuum unit? When it doesn't work, I put in a new one. From now on, you won't. The factory doesn't supply replacement vacuum units anymore. You gotta fix them yourself. I gotta what? <laughs> Relax, Mike. It's not as tough as it sounds. I'll show you how. But first, let me ask Joe a question. Joe, you're a good hunter. Tell me, suppose a bird gets up in front of you and flies to the right. You aim right at him? No, you gotta lead him. Aim at a point a little ahead of him. You gotta do that to allow time for the shot to reach that point the same time the bird does. Right. If you aim at the bird, you miss. That's because he moved ahead after you fired. Spark timing's like that, too. You gotta lead the piston. Fire ahead of where it is in the cylinder. This allows time for pressure of the ignited charge to reach the piston at the proper time for best results. If you fire when the piston's at top center, you'll miss full force of the pressure. That's because the piston moved ahead part way down the cylinder before the pressure hits it. So, timing is advanced just like a gun is aimed ahead of a bird. This makes the spark occur before the piston reaches top center. Then, when the ignited charge expands and exerts pressure, the piston is hit when it's ready to start down. Nice work, Al. But you better tell them how timing is advanced. Oh, I know about that. The distributor shaft turns, the governor weights move out, the spark advances. That's simple. Simple, huh? Listen, Mike, those weights work independently of the vacuum unit. Now, let me show you. You see, this governor plate is fastened to the distributor shaft. And the governor weights are attached to it. They're mounted on pins and held in place by springs. But did you know this? These springs are not the same. No siree. One is weak and the other is strong. 
But don't you ever stretch them like this. So what? Can't see where that's so all fired important. Ah, uh, you just ain't very sharp, kid. Come on, Al, give him the pitch. Well, it's like this. The weak spring lets the spark advance real quick, above idle speed. But it's strong enough so you don't get any advance during idle speed. Now, when engine speed goes above high idle speed, the strong spring starts working. The strong one sort of controls the weak one, keeps it from moving out too fast. So with both springs working together, you get a spark advance that's controlled at a slower, steadier rate. That's what gives a snappy pickup without the engine sounding like it's full of marbles. Now let me show you where the cam figures in this deal. Two slots here in the cam plate fit over pins on the weights. When the weights revolve with the shaft, the pins drive the cam. But the cam is free to turn on the distributor shaft. So, as the weights move out, the pins slide out in the cam slots, turning the cam clockwise. It's the cam turning forward that advances the timing. You'll see why when I put on the breaker plate. The lower part of the breaker plate is stationary, but the upper plate is movable. There's a bunch of ball bearings sandwiched in between it and the lower plate. Now, up to about eight miles an hour, nothing happens. The lobes on the cam meet the rubbing block on the contact arm in a normal position, like this. But when you speed up the engine, the weights move out and turn the cam ahead, like I said. This makes the lobes hit the contact arm sooner, spark occurs sooner, and timing's advanced. Well, if that's how timing's advanced, what's this unit for? Are you kidding? That's what gives faster pickup. You tell him, Al. Okay. Inside the chamber of the vacuum unit, there's a diaphragm with an arm attached at the center. On the other side of the diaphragm, there's a spring and some adjusting washers. Now, when there's no vacuum, the spring holds the diaphragm forward. But as vacuum builds up, it draws the diaphragm against the spring, pulling the connecting arm with it. Just a second, Al. Why not put the vacuum unit on the distributor so Mike can see how it works? I'm coming to that, Shrimp. You see, Mike, the connecting arm's attached to a pin on the movable part of the breaker plate. So, when vacuum pulls the connecting arm backward, it turns this movable plate counterclockwise. So, you see, the contact arm rubbing block meets the lobe on the cam sooner, spark occurs sooner, and timings advance. You get it, Mike? The vacuum unit advances timing according to the throttle opening, giving better economy. The governor weights advance timing according to engine speed giving maximum power. So you see, both units operate independently. I get it, but how come the vacuum unit doesn't advance the spark at idle speed? Well, you see, the vacuum unit is connected to the carburetor above the throttle valve. And since the throttle valve is closed or nearly closed at idle speed, vacuum can't reach the vacuum unit. As the throttle is open, air rushes by and creates a vacuum which advances the timing. Hey, Al, now that we got Mike wised up, let's get to work on Joan's car. Okay, Mike, get this distributor out and check it on the new tester that came in yesterday. On the tester? Oh, sure, that new tester. What's the matter? Something about that tester bothering you? Oh, no, swell machine. Glad we finally got one. It's just that, uh, well, uh, come here a second. Look, I don't want everybody knowing this, but I can't get the hang of that new tester. Relax, kid. There's nothing to it. Come on. We'll give this distributor a couple of whirls and we'll soon catch on. Now, before putting the distributor on the tester, there's a couple of things you ought to check. First, try wiggling the shaft back and forth. If there's too much play, it means the bushings are pretty well worn. Then... You ought to check the vacuum advance unit, like this. Sucking on the end of that chamber, like you would on a corncob pipe, tells whether it'll hold vacuum or whether the diaphragm's punctured. Everything seems okay, so we'll clamp the distributor in the tester and check the breaker point gap. But don't guess what that gap should measure. Look it up in the manual for the car you're working on. Then you'll have the right dope for the right distributor. You can say that again. 
Okay, I will. Look it up in the manual for the car. Cut it work. out. I got work to do. All right. We'll hook up the vacuum line and connect the leads from the tester to the primary connection on the distributor. Then we turn on the motor, run it up to 250 RPM, line up the zero mark on the dial plate to the end of the band of light. Let's check the advanced specifications on this distributor. This chart gives approved engineering specifications. Here's the distributor we're working on. It says at 350 RPM, there should be no advance. Okay, let's try it. It's all right. No advance at 350, Al. But supposing there had been an advance? Then you'd have to increase tension on the weak governor weight spring by bending the spring bracket out. Let's try it at 400 RPM, Mike. According to the chart, we ought to have three degrees of advance. So check the end of the light against the dial plate. Check's okay at that speed, too. Now we'll check full advance. On this model, that's nine degrees at 1,300 RPM. Give us 1,300, Mike, and we'll take a look. Nine degrees, right on the nose. Now we know the governor weight advance is working right. Hey, Al. Better tell them what to do if it ain't on the beam. In that case, you change the tension on the strong spring until you get the correct advance. And now, Mike, cut the speed down to around 800 RPM, where it'll hold a steady reading. Okay. Set the scale so zero lines up with the end of the light band. According to the specifications, nine inches of vacuum gives a four degree advance from the vacuum unit on this particular distributor. So, Mike, without changing the speed, turn the vacuum knob till you get a reading of nine inches on the vacuum gauge. Okay, how much advance have you got? Let's see. It's two degrees, Al. Only two, huh? Looks like we found our trouble, Mike. Maybe I'm dumb, but what's our trouble and where'd we find it? Hey, look, chum. The specs say that you should have four degrees at this vacuum, and you only got two. So, something's wrong in the vacuum unit. In other words, the spring's putting too much tension on the diaphragm, keeping the vacuum unit from doing its job. But, we can ease up that tension in jig time by changing the washer combination. So, let's take out the middle-sized washer and put in a thinner one. See if that does the trick. Start the tester, Mike, and run it up to 800 RPM. That did plenty, Al. That brought it right up to a four-degree advance. Good. That means we're getting four degrees from the vacuum unit. So it's working okay. Cut it off, Mike. By golly, operating this tester is easier than I thought. Sure, it's a cinch. Let's finish the check to be sure the spring is right and get this distributor back in Jones' car. Now that you've got Jones' car fixed, I'll show you how you can check both the governor and vacuum advance without even taking the distributor out of the car. Oh, brother, this I gotta see. Well, I saw it done by a guy who's still sweating out delivery of the distributor tester he's got on order. Here's what he used. A piece of chalk, a timing light, a vacuum gauge, and a test gadget like this. Now I've seen everything. Where did that screwy hookup come from? Right out of this booklet. It tells what parts to use, how to put them together, and how to run the test. What's more, there's plenty of dope about checking distributors on a tester, too. Now let's hook up the gadget. First, disconnect the vacuum unit tube from the carburetor and connect it to the brake tube T in this test gadget. That tube, running from the drain cock, connects to the carburetor. And the vacuum gauge screws into the brake tube T. Then you Just take the... Just a minute. What's this goofy contraption for, anyhow? Why, so I can cut the vacuum in and out, like you did on the tester. Now, take this chalk and mark up the timing gear case pointer. And, on the vibration damper, chalk the line where spark occurs at idle speed, which, for this car, is at dead center. Then, chalk the six-degree advance line and the ten-degree line. Some test, chalking and talking. I want to see some action. Fine. Suppose you start by putting the rear end of this car up on block. Oh, for the love of Pete. I got all this work. Because I got to drive the rear wheels and read the speedometer, that's why. Well, start the engine. 
Hook up the timing light and take the reading at idle speed. I must be nuts, but I'll do it. Timing's okay, mastermind. Now what? Put her in high gear and hold the engine speed steady when your speedometer reaches 12 miles an hour. Then we'll turn off the train cock and the test gadget so the vacuum control can't work. And check the timing again. Same as before, no advance at all. Naturally. It says in this book that you ain't supposed to get any advance at that speed if your weights are okay. Yeah, but how about higher speeds? Just watch with that light and we'll step this engine up a little more. There. You see how the timing's moved up to that six degree line? That proves those weights are working. Sure, they're working, but you can't tell if the advance is too much or not enough. All right, so it ain't the most accurate test in the world. It's better than nothing. Besides, you can come pretty close to checking on the vacuum control advance. Just hold the speed steady at six degrees. Now, by turning this drain cut, I'll let in the vacuum like you did on the tester. How much advance you got? Well, there's 10 degrees now. See? Four degrees from the vacuum unit, just like the book says. And if it hadn't come up to 10 degrees, I could have fixed it just like you did, by changing the washers. Okay, maybe you could squeeze by testing vacuum control units with this rig. But for a first-class job, you can't beat a distributor test fixture. Oh, Al, don't get me wrong. Of course this deal ain't as accurate as the tester. But you can do a reasonably satisfactory job with it if you'll take the time. Yes, sirree. It takes the know-how to find troubles and fix them quickly. And that's the right kind of service. I ought to know. I've been around.